them from Yeshua ben Barachia and Nitan and Brilai. Yudah ben Tabai Omer, Yudah ben Tabai says, Al ta'aseh atzmecha k'yochei adayani. Do not make yourself like those who arrange cases before the judges. Don't be like a lawyer. That you teach people how to make false claims. What is the job of a lawyer? A lot of times he has to lie. A lot of times he has to give people the right thing to say in order to win the case. So therefore, a person should not do this. Even if you know the defendant is innocent, you should not uh, lawyer them and teach them what to say in court to win. Why? Because then you go out and they're going to go, people are going to suspect you of teaching them to lie, or other people will learn from you how to lie in the future, right? So a lot of times, let's say, people could do fraud, right? The guy tells them, oh, that guy hit you in the car? Don't worry, just go. Go and say, oh, my back balit and this, make all the show. Go to the clinic, go to the doctor, make a, you know, uh, like a baloney claim, say that your spina got hurt, that way you, you know, get for the insurance, big check, we'll split it, me and you. You know, you, you oh, this guy, this guy, uh, you fell at this guy's work. Oh, yeah, claim workers' comp, whatever. Oh, the, the, this situation, uh, yeah, yeah, right in the business that uh, that your expensive uh, machine also got burned. Put it in there. Yeah, why not? Get as much as you can from there. Go and f- fudge the numbers on your uh, on your tax return and whatever. So you should get Medicaid, you should get this, you should get that. Why not? Do it. So he thinks he's umne. So he teaches his friend how to mess with the system. And it says the Mishnah, you should not do this. You should not be like a lawyer, teach people false claims. First of all, it could be outright stealing what they're doing. And then you're teaching him. And then what? You taught him something for the future. Now he says, oh, one time he taught me. Now I know how to do it always. So therefore, a person has to know what's worse. Stabbing somebody or teaching them how to do a sin. Teaching him how to do a sin is worse. Why? Because you're making him not just lose Olam Azeh. He's losing his Olam Abba. When both people are standing for you in judgment, you should look at them both as, as wicked. Meaning, you should not you assume one is more right than the other. You should give everyone a fair chance and assume everybody is wrong. Everybody still they prove to you what their story is. I don't accept anybody's story. A lot of times what happens in family specifically, you hear one person's side of the story and you get all worked up and you call right away. And you say, hello, who, who are you? Who's Pakoisa, huh? Yeah. What is this? You talk to so and so like this, you know? Uh, put, uh, put you in your place. And what are you doing? He said, "Listen, you didn't hear the other side of the story. You didn't say you didn't hear my side. You only took his story because he came all to you nervous and he was screaming and crying to you. So now all of a sudden you're on his side. Why? You should hear both sides of the story. Then judge. A lot of people they hear one side of the story and they say, "Yeah, you heard this rabbi. You heard this person. You heard what happened. You heard this. You... And they already started spreading rumors just because of one one person said." They didn't hear the other guy. You're not allowed to go and, and assume and judge a guy and tell him you're this, you're that, till you didn't hear his side. You have to hear his side. You cannot just assume just because somebody said something about him. You have to let him defend himself. So therefore, a person has to hear both sides of the story. And when they leave the court case, you they should be in front of you like both meredith. They have to look at them and both the keep. A lot of times, you may have a court case. The judge says, you owe him money. Shimon owes Sh- Ruven uh, money. You have to pay him. So now when they leave and they accept it upon this, so a lot of people don't accept the court case uh, verdict. It's very hard, difficult for them. I have to pay money. Who are you? I want a di- retrial. I want a different rabbi to judge me. And what? If he accepted it, you have to say, Chazak Baruch, he accepted it. You have to look at both of them as Zakain, meritorious people, because what? They accepted the halacha, they accepted the verdict. And therefore, even though before I looked at them both as wicked, but now once they accepted the verdict, I should look at both of them as uh, innocent people who accepted upon themselves the judgment without complaint. So now, says Shimon Meshetach, Shimon Meshetach Omer, have a You have to question the witnesses at length. You should be careful with your words. A person should ask the witnesses a lot of questions. You have to make sure to validate what they said. You know, sometimes there's murder cases, sometimes there's money cases, and maybe there'll be false witnesses. Maybe there's people are paid off to give false testimony. You have to ask them a lot of questions to make sure they're legit. Where were you? How? What time was it? What did you see there? Who else was there? You ask the tons of questions to make to verify, and you have two witnesses. You ask them individually. That way you can compare and contrast their answers, see if they were, you know, a real case or not. And then what? You have to be careful, says Shetach, how you ask them, because maybe from your words, they'll learn to lie. They see that you want a, a certain answer. They can understand from your words, they need a certain answer. So they're smart. So they'll go and say what you want to hear. A lot of times people will say what people want to hear. There may be politicians with you. So therefore what? You have to make sure to ask them sometimes trick questions. And test, they ask trick questions. 
Now make the sound, answers sound like they're good, and then they know to weed out the people who really know who versus the people who don't know. So therefore, sometimes they would ask trick questions to the witnesses. They would go and uh, ask them questions, throw them off to see if they really were lying or not. Shemayim v'Tanim kibelu b'hem. Shemayim v'Tanim were the next generation of rabbis. They say Shemayim Omer Ehov et Melacha, love labor, v'snayat Rabbanut, hate the leadership. And do not connect to the authorities, to the government, because they'll throw you away when they don't need you. What does it mean, love work? A person should have a job. A person who only learns and thinks that Parnassah will come from Shemaim, he's got a rude awakening. And what? The, is gonna, the Mishnah is going to say later that work and learning don't give time for Yitzhara. When you have time for Yitzhara, when you do sin, when you're bored. So therefore, if you what? If you work and you learn, you have a busy schedule, you're not going to sin. And then he says, hey, position of authority. We know who's the first person to die from the 12 tribes. Yosef, why? Because he was a position of authority. A lot of times authority can cut to your head and give you gava. You could be, become, uh, uh, 